Here we'll do two more examples of integration with trig functions and trig identities and u substitution. For this one we're going to integrate cosine squared of x. We haven't done any examples yet in this section with all even powers and so now we're going to see this one. In the last video as we talked about the procedure for doing this form I simply said if all the powers are even use the half angle identities and that's where I left it. So we'll see that playing out here. Let me remind you of what the half angle identities say. For instance the sine squared of x can be rewritten as one half times one minus the cosine of two x and cosine squared of x can be rewritten as one half times one plus the cosine of 2x. Now when we do this we're going to have a cosine of 2x in our answer. So we need to be able to integrate cosine of 2x but that's something that we've done plenty of times when we first learned about u substitution. So just as a reminder the integral of the cosine of 2x would be itself a short u substitution problem but it's a relatively simple one where u equals 2x and so when you do your u substitution you'll have du equals 2dx and you'll need to move the 2 over and get 1 half du. What that means is a 1 half shows up in your answer. So the integral of the cosine function gives you sine of 2x and then because of the u substitution there's a 1 half in the answer. So just a reminder, that's one that's relatively simple and it should be familiar for when we did U substitution at the beginning of the semester, but if you've forgotten, there's just a quick reminder. If you need to work through the full U substitution to verify that, you can pause and make sure that that makes sense to you. That when you integrate the cosine of 2x, you get 1 half sine of 2x plus c. But of course, you can also check by differentiating that and making sure you get cosine of 2x. So in this case we have cosine squared. If we had for instance sine squared and cosine squared we would use both half angle identities but in this case we only need to use the second one and we can rewrite cosine squared as one half and I'll distribute the one half here so we get one half plus one half cosine of 2x. Now at this point, integrating is relatively straightforward. There is a quick u substitution here, but we've already seen the answer to that on the side here, so we don't actually need to do any extra work here. We integrate 1 half and get 1 half x. When we integrate 1 half cosine of 2x, the cosine of 2x turns into 1 half sine of 2x plus c. So we actually get 1 half x plus 1 fourth sine of 2x plus c. And there's our final answer. So when there's only even powers of sine or cosine, you need to use these half angle identities. But it turns out that when you do, the u substitution is pretty simple. It's just a matter of remembering how to do u substitution with a cosine of 2x in this case. And because the half angle identities both involve cosine of 2x, then as long as you remember that integral, you'll see that occur several times in these problems. So with even powers, it's fairly straightforward, which is why I focused mostly on examples with odd powers. Those are the ones that can be a little bit trickier. These even power ones, you simply use the half angle identity and then integrate wherever you see cosine of 2x. Let me show you one more example where both powers are odd. And if you remember, when we're looking at one of these examples, we're looking for an odd power to separate off as du. In this case, both of them are odd, so really we could choose either one. We could either split off sine of x and then rewrite everything else in terms of cosine, or we could split off a cosine and write everything else in terms of sine. 
Now you may want to pause here and see if you can figure out which one will be easier to work with. Is it going to be easier to split off sine or to split off cosine? And if you think it through, if you split off a sine of x, what you'll be left with is sine to the fourth that you'll need to rewrite in terms of cosine. In other words, you'll have to write that as sine squared times sine squared, and then each of those will be replaced with one minus cosine squared. So you'll have one minus cosine squared times one minus cosine squared, which is just a little bit tedious. On the other hand, if you split off a cosine, you'll have cosine squared times cosine. So only one replacement is necessary with the Pythagorean identity. So it's generally easier to work with the smaller power and to split off one of those to serve as du. But it would be totally correct to do it either way. You can choose either one. It just turns out it's easier with the smaller power. So we're gonna separate off a cosine. We'll rewrite this as sine to the fifth of x times cosine squared of x times cosine of x, which means we're heading down a path to let du take care of the cosine, so we're gonna let u equal sine of x, so that du will equal cosine of x, which means this part is okay. It's already written in terms of sine. It's this middle piece, the cosine squared, that needs to be rewritten in terms of sine. So that's what we replace with one minus sine squared. And at this point, we're ready to do the u substitution. If we let u equal sine of x, du equals cosine of x, dx, which means our substitution turns into u to the fifth times one minus u squared times du. And again, to integrate, we're going to distribute. So we get u to the fifth minus u to the seventh du, which becomes one sixth u to the sixth minus one eighth u to the eighth plus c when we integrate. And then we simply replace u with sine of x again. So there's our answer. I'm gonna write down a few other examples in the notes that I won't cover in any videos. I'll simply write down the example and then write down the answers afterward. And you should go through and see if you can follow those and work them out and get the correct answers. So look at the answers if you need to, but try to work them out yourself before you see the answer. And you'll use those as practice. And if you have any questions on those, feel free to ask and I will clarify.